I'm Shane White, and this is The Process. Hey gang, Shane White here with another edition of The Process. Today we're going to look at watercolors. This is my watercolor kit. I usually keep this guy in there. It's my Windsor & Noon travel kit. In it, I use Vermilion Hue, Cadmium Lemon, Viridian Green, Permanent Green, Ivory Black, Ultramarine, Thalo Blue, Burnt Umber, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Alizarin Crimson Permanent, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Cerulean Blue, and Cobalt Blue. This is the best range of colors that works for me, for landscapes and portraits and everything in between. And it all fits in here. I also carry white gouache for accents or to thicken colors for corrections. I refilled these, as you can see, with two watercolors. Ideally, you should let them sit out for a week or so to thoroughly dry and harden for transport. But now, I want to make the pocket-sized Altoid version of that. With this smaller kit, I'll use this, a water-filled watercolor brush. It allows you to squeeze the water out as you go, and then you can wipe off the excess color to begin again. So, that's that. Now the big question, how do I choose the five best colors? If you're like me, you have a lot of colors to choose from. I've collected these from friends over the years who've given up the ghost and gone fully digital. I know, sad times, folks. Sadder still, I don't even use most of these. Like purple matter. It's a fugitive color, fades terribly in light. So in lieu of all that, these go away. I do, however, keep these watercolors, which is a far more basic set. And most of these typically go in here. Because I have to fit the dynamics of my main travel kit into the pocket edition, how do I go about picking colors? I test every color so that I can see their properties and figure out what the widest spectrum is available to me. So here's what I came up with after a few hours of testing. Prussian Blue, Quinacridone Red, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, and Cadmium Lemon. That's the five colors, and now I'll show you why I picked them. It's a good idea to keep a test sheet of color for every palette that you make. It'll help you remember what the colors are so you can purchase more in the future, and it'll remind you of why you picked them in the first place. I keep a few of these sheets clipped together so I don't lose track of them. The idea here is to find colors that intermix with each other in such a way that you get a full spectrum of primary and secondary colors with a broad enough value range. Personally, I like black, but I have no room for black as a standalone color. Some artists don't care for it, but I find it has a lot of incredible properties that should not be ignored. Here's another reason why a multi-tool is good to have around. Watercolor caps, am I right? I could have went with ultramarine blue, but it tends to go a little too violet for me. You see here how Prussian blue is a very rich blue, almost indigo, but with better color fast properties. Quinacridone red is a cooler, high chroma red. It's not so cool that it won't play well with other colors. Both of these are Holbein brand colors whose pigment quality is very good. Cadmium lemon is also a cool yellow and quite possibly the brightest yellow you can get. And here's the two earth tones, Burnt Umber and Yellow Ochre. These last three colors are Windsor and Newton. Brush and Blue and Quinacridone Red make a really nice purple that is balanced and can be pushed toward the red side or the blue side with equal intensity. Let's look at Quinacridone Red and Cad Lemon. Typically, these colors would make orange, and while it's a nice enough orange, what's great about this, if I grab a bit of pure red, and then a bit of yellow, I can mix a fire engine red, which is pretty ideal when you want to get to the other end of the warm spectrum. And again, you can get down to where your yellows almost feel like cadmium yellow deep. Cadmium lemon is a strong yellow, and as you can see with burnt umber, you can almost mimic a yellow ochre, which begs the question, why would I keep yellow ochre? Well, first you can make an awesome brown. Uh, oh man. Whoops, um, yeah. Okay, um, 
In its purest form, it's a really rich transition into these natural earth zones. Speaking of which, how do these last two mix together? They're going to have a little more of a green tint overall, but nice variability throughout. So now let's mix our secondary colors. Take some blue and yellow. Wow, look at that. Look at how rich that is. That's an amazing range of pure green. And for a lot of people who are scared of color, Prussian blue is still more controllable than the synthetic thalos. I'd never used Prussian blue before and it's a recent discovery, very versatile. So remember me whining about not having black? Let's take care of that now. So in their purest form, with very little water, I take Prussian blue, quinacridone red, and take some burnt umber. Now check this out, add a little water, and look how this black works. It's a nice warm black. But I still have control to make it cooler or warmer. But overall, I'm really impressed with this black. I'll keep my gouache handy for highlights or whatever is needed, but this kit really can do a lot with very little. To give you an idea of what this palette can really do, here are a few examples of plain air sketches I recently did. Now I'll show you how to build your box. First, buy a box of Altoids. I've got some double stick tape that I need to put in here. I roughly eyeball it and cut it. Make sure it fits before sticking it down. You can also get these plastic paint wells or watercolor pans as some call it at art stores all over the US. The reason why I don't fill these up beforehand is I want to be able to press them into place. Place them in as loose as you can until they fit. I have this little space for a little sponge. I have a synthetic one, but I don't really like it. It doesn't hold water at all, so I might replace it here. It's also handy for soaking up excess water, etc. I'm still debating on having another sponge in the kit, but it might not work out. That's where I'm gonna end up mixing my paints anyways. Let's see if I can take a natural sponge and cut a perfect cube using this one as a guide. Now, how do you set up your palette? Since I'm right-handed, I usually go light on my right side and dark on the left. As you can see here in this kit, I have everything grouped how I would normally work, warms and cools grouped together. But in this case, I want to keep all my primary colors up here. I'll probably lay it out this way. Keeping the yellow ochre on my right, so I generally have the lighter colors together. Let's press this down, and this here is a super handy tool. It's a tube ringer. I mostly use it for oils, but it's good for all paints, even toothpaste. It's made by the Gill Mechanical Company out of Oregon. Here's a good tip. Keep the cap on when you initially put the tube in the ringer. It'll push all the paint forward. And now it's ready to be squeezed out. Work in circles trying to fill up the square space of the watercolor pans. Since this is a pocket set, you don't need to fill it to the brim because most likely you won't use it as much as, say, a larger kit. But your mileage may vary. You might fall in love with this thing. The thing about burnt umber is that it's a drier color and can get a little crumbly over a long period of time, so keep an eye on that. What I like about watercolors is that you can let them dry in the pans and they come back to life by applying water. You don't have to do a lot of prep nor a lot of cleanup. Unlike wash, which loses its initial properties of beautiful buttery coverage when left to dry. Here's another great reason for the multi-tool. Nothing goes to waste. Squeeze every last bit of that expensive paint out. Cadmium paints are typically expensive. Quinacridones, not so much. It's good to keep the ends of your paint tubes clean. That way your paint has a better seal and it's easier to get the cap off. I usually lay out my colors from light to dark. It's a habit I picked up with oil painting. 
Because I work in a variety of mediums, I tend to try to duplicate the palette intensity so that the paints give me the control that I want. I prefer more color, you may prefer something different. If that's the case, experiment and seek out the best palette that suits your current taste. From here, I'll let the paints dry out for a few days. This other one, from time to time, needs little maintenance. For instance, the nasty sponge needs replaced. Try to find the most dense part of the natural sponge and cut to fit. And if you haven't seen one of these before, they are amazing. This here is a decent but small brush. And this you can fill with water in case of emergency. It folds up like so and it even has a thumb ring to keep hold of your palette. And all that fits in here. And now I'm ready to go. But because I also filled these up recently, I have to let these dry out too. Oh, and this is also super handy, a spray bottle. Will keep your palette damp and your colors ready to rock. These brushes are also made by Kuretake, in case you were wondering. Hopefully that gives you a better idea on how to make your own pocket-sized travel kit. Have fun, safe travels, and as always, thanks for watching. Oh, and if you like this channel, please consider subscribing today. And please, if you have more questions, feel free to leave a comment below.